more can I say? Top billing. Top billing. Hi, gang. Fly, Eagles. Fly. I want to talk about the slot corner position. Now, this has been a point of emphasis for your boy, Jersey Murphy. Right here. Listen, right. Hold on. Hold on. Before we get into all that, man, make sure you're subscribed if you're not already subscribed, right? Uh, we got to keep building out this Philadelphia Eagles drawing, right? I need all my people from Jersey to stand up, support your boy, and of course, everybody in the surrounding areas, all of Philly, all of Delaware, Elton, Maryland, and all that too, man. So make sure you put your boy on and make sure you pe put other people on to your boy by sharing because sharing is caring, right? All right, so listen. The slot cornerback position has been a point of emphasis for me um, because I could see this kind of stuff coming from a mile away. The minute I heard that they wanted to put James Bradbury in the slot, I was like, shit, Philly's in trouble, right? That means they don't have an answer because if you're understanding, if you have an understanding of skill sets, you would know the slot is not James Bradbury's cup of tea. His hips are stiffer than a diving board, right? So you would want JB to be... Press right. Uh, people aren't pressing these days. I need to. We need to eradicate that from the from the books, right? People aren't pressing these days. You get a lot of close mirror quarters, right? Or close quarters mirroring. You get a lot of bell, right? Over the top bell. You will get kind of a, a a mid read kind of. You know what I'm saying? Like in the in the in between zone. So nobody's really pressing anymore. So. That's not a thing there, but you would want to do that in a slot. If it's not pressing, you would definitely want to decrease the space. It's a little bit different. I don't actually mind there being a little bit of cushion on the outside because these guys can get beat deep by any stretch of them, especially a James Bradbury. He can't run like that, but JB is a great technician. With JB having that back to the sideline, oh man, he's very difficult to beat there. He just needs to be able to transition with a receiver and keep him in front of him but just not let anybody behind him and being a back to the basket or a back to the sideline and shuffle, shuffle bell type is good for him. Darius Slay, he can do it all. No doubt about that. To me, he gets lazy in his technique. He's a little easier to beat than people, you know what I'm saying, acknowledge as well, to be honest with you there. But he's such a great athlete that he makes up for it more times than not there. But slot position, uh, not good for James Bradbury. Now, this is the Rams offense right here, right? They'll put a three receiver, put three receivers to one side and have a slot and a tight slot. The tight slot will be the receiver closest to the line of scrimmage or closest to the offensive lineman. And then you have your regular slot and then you'll have your, your guy out wide on those type of things right there. So that means you get two people having to fend a two-way go at any point in time. And it also means if you're running with a tight slot, you can get him mashed up on a linebacker. On this one right here, though, you see Cooper Cup, perhaps the top three receiver in the NFL going against young Mario Goodrich here, who hasn't getting any experience because he's been languishing on the bench. And you kind of see the results. But the results to me were derived from the type of technique. Look at him take outside presence there. That's just too easy. There were people saying, oh, they couldn't cover them. Well, this isn't really covering anything. You're really covering gra grass, right? Before the snap, you take outside presence there, and you know they run these choice routes. There's no choice to be involved in this. They're going to take the path of least resistance. Way too much cushion on the inside there to be given up. And this is one of the this is the quickest pass there is besides a hitch, right? You get that death by a thousand cuts. Same deal right here. This time you got the technique reduced. Cooper Cup this time on Morrow. What did I say before? I'd rather see big dime. Uh, you either bring in an extra run with those three safeties, right? An extra safety there. Take out a linebacker, only have one linebacker. I do not want to see linebackers in coverage. None of these linebackers can really cover, and they definitely can't cover a Cooper Cup because none of the cornerbacks, the elite cornerbacks, can cover him either. But we see right here, choice route. Uh, banged it to the inside path of least resistance. And he played him with the hezzy too. Coming off of a cushion, that's already going to be tough to deal with. But look at Cooper Cup, keeping him guessing, right? You keep a man guessing up until it's time to make that move. You get that two-way go here. Morrow, he's all centered up, right? He don't know what's going on right here. He's, he's both bending over at the waist and he's straight up and down right there. So he's out of his league right there, right? Cooper Cup, all right, going to the outside, 
not going to be the deal right there. If you have a choice, you're going to always bang this to the inside right here because it doesn't take much because the throw is just a lot quicker. Throw is behind him a little bit, and it didn't even matter right there. And on both of these plays, you can see Justin Evans coming up to make the tackle here. That's not what you want. Now, this is important to take note of here, how the Eagles were reacting to this in the first half. Now, this is Tyler Higby, the tight end. JB is across from him. What would that denote if you're keeping up or you're on your game there? Obviously, that would be zone because if it were man, JB would be on the other side matching up with one of these receivers on the three receiver side. He's across from the tight end who's just running him out of there, right? He's clearing him out. This is the action on the inside. You got your boy right here, Tutu Atwell. He's getting vert. He's kind of running interference for Puka Nakoa here, who is running a pivot route back to the inside. Um, I actually forget what's going on at the top side right here, but this is the action right there because, of course, and then you have Cooper Cup here who's doing his choice route thing. And remember I said, path the least resistance. So the Eagles still in them, uh, still in base personnel, right? Or they're still in there. They're in their nickel personnel instead of dime personnel. So you only have one corner on the field on the inside. That would be Mario Goodrich, both inside linebackers in the game. So that means one of them would be matched, except Cunningham's being sent. So then that puts the onus on the safety, the next level of defense. Your boy Reed Blankenship right here actually drives on the ball very well here. But you can just see the kind of stuff that they're doing. So I didn't like the game plan going against this. And this is what the Rams always do. Look at that. Uh, great play by Reed Blankenship to break it up. I actually forget what the penalty was. I don't believe it was actually on Reed there because he arrived at the at the perfect time, in my opinion. I could be wrong with that. I just don't remember what the penalty was there. But um, as you can see right here, it becomes a middle of the field game. Look at that, right? They understand how to keep this portion open. So if you see that, that should be the first thing that you take away. However, the Eagles stayed in that zone match, right? So it's, it's kind of a pattern match deal right here. However, still giving up outside or giving up inside leverage, taking an outside technique. Puka Nakua right here. Uh, looks like he's probably running a corner route. You get this motion, right? You get this kinetic motion before the snap. Tutu Atrell coming in, kind of crossing and muddying the waters, getting vert. And then you have that same deal right here. Delayed choice route by Cooper Cup. And you can see that the action that they're getting. So they're running multiple people off on the inside. Because now look, Eli Ricks is there in the slot. And it's the same deal. Look, you get that kinetic motion there, set it up, and look who takes outside presence and still giving up that inside, knowing that, hey, this is what they want to do. They want to keep getting to this for death by a thousand cuts. And that's exactly what happens. <laughs> Too easy. If we can see it, we know they can see it. They know more about football than us. However, there's a philosophy that you guys don't understand that that's what they... That's what you live and, and die on, right? Or at least that's what you're rooted in. The philosophy is bend, don't break. You want to take a bunch of easy passes, we'll do that to not give up shit over the top. And then when we get you outside, right, into the roaring 20s, when the roaring 20s hit in that red zone, then we tighten it up there and force you to kick a field goal. It's a, it's a, it's a, it's a way to play, right? There's no wrong or right way to play because there's people who are successful doing that. And then you have people like my boy, right? One of my favorite of all time, uh, Rex Ryan, who doesn't believe in shit like that. He's going to attack, 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 attack. And a lot of times they were giving up the big play though. So it's all about your philosophy. As I said on the after game review, everyone was community pussy right here. You can see Eli Ricks, um, Cooper Cup, mm. Nasty, and that's some decent separation too, right? That's that late pandemic separation, but separation nonetheless, right? And you can see right here, Eli Riggs' skill set, probably not the best in a tight slot situation going against Cooper Cup there. However, he does have a lot more fluid hips, but he is long, longer and gangly there. So usually you want a quicker cat there, but... Hey, man, you got to go with the best options you have right there. So him as an option, definitely.
Now, this is what I mean about JB. This is very reminiscent of the Super Bowl when they reduced the alignment, right, of the receiver, um, Juju Smith Schuster. Reduce the alignment, make JB cover a lot of space here. Tuto Atwell reduced into that three receiver set. And then look, banged him is too easy. <laughs> right? JB not quick enough for that. And he tries to undercut it. That's what I always say. Right? You may get away with something with one quarterback and one receiver combination, then you have one that's just better. Right? Matthew Stafford going to Tutu Atwell is just better. So that's what I meant about the Sidney Brown thing. Right? One thing where he was beaten on in my opinion, right? Not even an opinion. He was beaten on, and then the quarterback threw it to the inside, and he was able to recover. If it was just a normal, regular pass, maybe somebody like Matthew Stafford throwing it, that's a touchdown in the Sidney Brown play from a few games ago as well. So, right, got to get this under control. All right, so here was your first adjustment, and this was in the first half. You can see on the left side of the field, you see Darius Slade. That means you're in man coverage now, and you put him – on the inside receiver, Cooper Cup. Not the deal right here. At least on this particular rep, I don't like this at all. Slay doing that shit that I don't like. What did I say? Now, I've said it this entire time. Slay gets lazy in his technique. He's such a great player and such a good athlete that he's getting lazy in his technique. Look at that. That's right. So, you still have that outside technique right there, but you're in man coverage, so it's a little bit easier to combat there, but... Come on, what's this? With some goofball who said that Slay, when he held in the last game, he slipped or some shit like that. Even though I showed him not slipping, he was simply holding. Same deal right here, man. You're holding on a transition the entire way. You, you're holding this dude's pockets, right? You're holding his damn pockets like in the yard in, in prison, right? <laughs> Hold my pockets, right? So you're holding that man's pockets the entire way, and you have to let go in the transition, and then it's too late right there. You play cornerback with your feet, man, not with your hands. Come on, what are we doing here? All right, now look at the adjustments here. You still have your nickel package going on here with your two inside linebackers. However, you can see the presence start to take shape. Stand your ground law, right? You got the stand your ground law, and you have them taking inside presence. So look, you see nobody's backing up. Inside presence, same deal right here. Instead of Zach Cunningham, probably can't see it as good right here in the All-22. Instead of him jumping to the outside, he stays to the inside. It's a quick hitter, all right? We'll let it, we'll let it roll all the way through for the for the crybabies. Look, mm, this was on the Jalen Carter sack. This changed everything right there. That's gonna make you gunshot. So it's a three-step drop. It's meant the ball's meant to come out fast. And the quarterback doesn't get as much depth as well. So it makes it a little easier to get a sack, especially when you have a big monster like Jalen Carter burping the baby and getting vert up the field there. But if you take that presence on the inside, you force this to go outside here. Uh, same deal right here, right? They want to do those choice routes. You force them to go to the outside here. But Stafford already had his mind made up that Cooper Cup was going to beat Zach Cunningham there. But he takes inside presence and stays with it. Nothing Stafford could do right here but get spun like a dreidel and fertilize, right, and, and change the entire scope of the game because now he's going to be seeing dungeons and dragons and dandelions and all kinds of shit, right? He was, he was woozy to begin with, and then he's going to be a little gun shy with it as well. Here's another one, right? When that pressure coming, right, you're getting it organically, then you can get it fabricated as well. You'll see... Everyone mugged up here. You get some people drop off, but you get Justin Evans here being sent. They want to work that quick game. If they want to work the quick game, you have to quickly heat that ass up like an ironing board, like my man Meek Mill said back in the day, right? So you get this motion a bunch right here, and then you get your normal thing that they do right here. Try to work the middle of the field on that delay with Cooper Cup. You know what he wants to do. He wants to bang it to the inside, but look at the coverage. The coverage is going to be to the inside so watch motion the bunch right there then look at the coverage force him outside what is Stafford gonna do but get his ass heated up he's staring that down the entire way that's exactly where he wants to go here either want to work with that because there's a lot of cushion being given up out there or he wants to hit that path of, path of least resistance right 
Cooper Cup being forced to play on the inside there. You get Brad Roby showing presence on the inside, forcing that back outside there. Look at that. Nothing to it but to do it. We can see it from this side as far as the pressure goes. Look at that. And then you got your boy Josh Sweat there uncovering, his, of course, as well working. Look at that. Staring it down the entire way. You take away that inside present presence force it to go away right or that inside portion of that force it to go outside he gonna have to sell that bad boy and bang fertilized again and he was flat with it too <laughs> look at him he passed away he passed away for at least two minutes there right they revived his ass right there come on man hell of an adjustment all right for those of us who love the nuts and bolts here pause gotta pause that this is a good cat and mouse game when they break the huddle out of 11 personnel it originally looks like Philly is in zone, right? With the two linebackers here. Watch. They'll break the huddle. They'll see this. Send the running back out. And you don't see the run, uh, linebackers follow them originally. So you got Stafford now communicating. He's like, all right, it's zone. All right, everybody knows what to do. And then you'll see Morrow and Cunningham communicate. They send Cunningham out. And now you see everybody switch. Reed Dallas starts to read. Reed Blankenship starts to come up right here, right? You'll see him, so now it's man coverage. He's on a tight slot here, which was Cooper Cup. Cooper Cup's always the number one read, reading inside out. He's going to be running an inside fade. They had us. Absolutely had us. I'm not here to lie to you. They had two or three times in the second half they were going to hit explosive plays, possibly for a touchdown. We were fortunate. You know why? Because in this business, you create your own luck. So with that being said, Stafford doesn't adjust the protection accordingly because you get Morrow here sneaking up. The lineman takes him, right? He's going to be the biggest threat as the inside threat getting to Stafford. And they're thinking that it's going to be quick game, right? But it's a longer developing play. You leave Josh Sweat uncovered because you usually want to go right behind him. But re taking that presence right there and, and it's done. You can see it work right here. Good cat and mouse game. Re now you see posted up. Now look at that. You see him adjusting. They adjusting right there. Reed goes back. And then Reed goes back again and decreases the space. Take away that slant. Nothing staff could do but throw it up for a hope and a prayer. That's hard. See right there? Left Josh Sweat uncovered. So they couldn't run their normal game. So on this inside fade, you need a little bit more time. Morrow occupy him. Nothing staff could do but chuck and duck. Chuck and duck because the pressure, right? Pressure burst pipes. It's time to apply it now. Make ninjas lie it down and tie it down. You don't know nothing about that, baby. It's from my old head cats, right, with the Philly rap. Beanie Mac, last couple right here because, quite frankly, they didn't have that many times they had to defend in the second half because the offense was just crazy with the time of possession. And then when they did defend, you can see them right here, right? More man coverage, decreasing the space. Look at this. Go in motion right here. So your motion is stack. Now look at the space decrease right here. Instead of your boy Roby being way off here, JB being way off, the space is decreased to take away that quick game. And you get this right here, right? They were fortunate again on this play right here. I'll highlight this one because Cooper Cup did eventually shake loose from Roby, but that clock sped Stafford up, right? We we'll see it from here. That clock absolutely speeding Stafford up, right? He, he had more time than he imagined there, and he's still with the miscommunication there. <laughs> like, what are we doing here, man? Hell of an adjustment, right? Sometimes, man, it's a game of inches, and sometimes it's just a game of adjustments, man, to take away those inches there. You see them running them stunts up front. Got multiple uh, edge players in the game right there, right? Is Sweat in there, too? No, nah, it's just Reddit. Yeah, Sweat's in there, too, so Sweat... You got Graham here. I need to. Yeah, I, know, I got some other shit I need to look at. I love some of this. I saw some other ones where they had uh, three edge players in the game at the same time. But Brandon Graham pushing the pocket right there from the inside. A lot of the shit you can do with BG there. So that pressure is starting to get this guy for sped up his clock there. All right. Now here's that play from earlier, I believe, that was on Eli Ricks with Cooper Cup on that delay slant on the inside there. Once again, kinetic motion to bunch. You get that three receiver set right there and then you get ultimately your boy Cooper Cup here trying to bang it to the inside pause and uh, you get Roby taking the outside presence 
but he really sh- shoots in on this. And you have Morrow showing presence around here as well there. So taking away that spray space, moneying up the waters there, and you can see that adjustment. Motion a bunch. They run it out, Puka Nakoa, and look, tackle. Hard, absolutely hard right there. And then I noticed this, like I said before. This time Reddick over here, you have Nolan Smith and Josh Sweat, right? Look who you have on the outside there. This is how versatile these guys are. Almost at a damn nine technique, I think it's my boy Milton Williams. Look, Milton Williams coming off a damn, looking like Trent Coles or somebody out there right there. Look at that. And then there's Nolan Smith not even being used to rush the passer, which he shouldn't be at this particular point in time anyway. He's taking away that space on the inside, a bigger body, a bigger presence there. Nothing for Matthew Stafford to do but to let Cooper Cup get fertilized as well. Add him to the fertilization right there. So there you have it, man. Great adjustments by Coach Desai. I had somebody come up in here talking about uh, do you think Matt Patricia called a game in the second half? I hate that shit, right? If you know me straight up, I hate that shit. I'm all for all kinds of fights, you know what I'm saying, going on in life. And I'm going to be that to the day that I die, to the casket drop. If you go on and be able to talk shit about somebody when you feel they're not doing something good, and then you're going to give them no credit when something does go well, you're going to give it to somebody else just out of some conspiracy theory type shit? Like, what, what is that? No, Coach Desai with the adjustments there, and that's what it is, straight up. So, come on, man. We can't be doing that, man. But, hey, listen, so damn good team to be practicing against, right? Uh, for some of these teams you'll see in the future, the, the, the Rams are a damn good passing team. They have very good passing personnel with the quarterback, the receivers, the tight end right there. You won't see too many teams actually better than them in that aspect. So, take note of that right there. Seattle. Right, one of those teams you'll see definitely as good as those guys, but very similar in the setup there with the talent around them. Not better than the Rams in that aspect there, and of course San Francisco and these teams like that. The Dolphins, right? The Dolphins with that type of speed, they're right there too. So it's a good warm up game for the stretch that you have coming up now. But next up, though, baby, that team you see over my right shoulder there, baby, the New Jersey Jets, right? My Jets, my Eagles, it's the Murph Bowl, right? The all Murph Bowl will have more coverage on that right here. I might get to some more aspect on this game before I move to preview coverage of that one, right? This will be one of the rare times I actually do preview coverage because of the Jets being there, all right? But your boy Jersey Murph, as always, man, big salute to everybody out there. Make sure you're sending in that quality support if you like the channel, if you like and you dig the content, right? As always, make sure you keep the channel rolling, all right? Salute. What more can I say? Top billing. Top billing.